Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 8, and this is going to be my review for Episode 17 for this season, otherwise entitled Keep It Dark. But of course, if you don't watch the episode, go away, and to be honest, let's not, you know, beat around the bush, if you want to call it, mid-episode. Let's just get it out, straight out of the gate. However, some interesting things for about a fifth, a fourth... Around a quarter. We'll say around a quarter of the episode. It's probably less, but I'm just going to say it's about a quarter of the episode that uh, continues into the rest of this season. So this episode, mostly filler, mid-filler, not very good. However, the stuff that was good revolving around certain characters and a new character leads directly into the rest of the season and the end of the season storyline. So very important to talk about that stuff. Um, as well as referring to something else. But of course, throughout the video, be sure let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions, I guess, on the good stuff. Maybe if you want to tear apart the bad stuff, I don't know. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down there. And of course, uh, if you're going to enjoy the video, I want to show you support. And you're excited for the end of this season, how the, you know, this storyline wraps up, or, you know, the new storyline that's coming our way to end the season, why not drop a like on the video to do all that? So last episode, uh, of course, we had a week off. So there wasn't Flash last week, so we've had a week off. But last episode, we had the Old Man Barry episode where Barry is sort of rapidly aging. You know, a fun filler episode. That was just, it felt like a season one sort of fun episode. Um, but right towards the end, Barry actually destroys Caitlin's work, you know, that she's been working on to potentially bring Frost back from the little bit that might be left within her sort of subconscious. I think that's where Caitlin was sort of saying where it would lie. And Caitlin gave a bit of a dodgy look, not happy. People questioning, including myself, whether... You know, this is like the start of maybe like, you know, Killer Frost 2.0 or something like that. We don't really get much more in this episode outside of like just addressing where Kaylin is, I guess, for the most part. So I guess the big question is where in this season do they address it again? I think we're going to be waiting until maybe the finale. Um, but yeah, they slightly address it in this episode, but not to a big degree. Now, this episode, as I said, as a whole, was pretty mid. Like the main story... I couldn't care for it at all. And I knew, and the thing is, is that you, I like to be proven wrong. I like to be going like, hey, I might not be interested in this episode. And then you go into it and you enjoy the hell out of it. I love being proven wrong, uh, especially when it comes to like expectations about the quality of something. But I think every prediction about this episode was right. If not, probably, you know, a bit of a compliment because I think it might've been worse than it was. And it's not like it was just like terrible acting or whatever. It was just not very interesting. And I think most people can agree, but Let's just dive into it and we'll try and skip over that, the main storyline as quick as possible so we can more dive into the quote unquote interesting parts or just the actual interesting parts of the episode. Um, so yeah, if we start talking about the main storyline, you don't really care, just sit tight because I'll just try and get through them as quick as possible and everything like that. But yeah, we start off this episode in quite a uh, fast way, if you want to put it, with Barry running to an alert sort of alarm thing going off at Ivo Laboratories, which we did see in the trailer for this episode where the issue that caused the alert being, you know, put out, like there's nothing there. Barry gets there, there's obviously like burn marks and stuff everywhere, but it's as if he's already been there and extinguished it and everything like that. And this is when the, the one of the uh, the scientists that's there says that he already showed up. It's like, oh, you're back, Flash. Thanks for saving us before and everything like that. And, you know, someone had saved him in a very flashy way, including like the tornado hands to put out the fire and everything like that. But... Barry knows it wasn't him because it's like, well, I know where I was. I'm not having any memory, you know, losses or anything like that. So who the hell was it? Is there a new speedster in town? That seems to be the case. Now, Barry does go through a list of possible suspects and really can't make a decent connection. So this is putting some stress on Barry. He's like, well, Jesus Christ. And you gotta think at this moment, he's potentially thinking it's a villain. You know, it's a villainous speedster because they stole, um... Like they, they, well, we'll get to the stealing in a second, but they, you know, put this fire thing, like who just starts a fire randomly in a laboratory. So there must be some issue, um, in regards to all of that. So yeah, it's putting stress on Barry and then you gotta, you gotta remember that this is going alongside all the stuff that's going on with Caitlin and that whole issue from last episode as well. And she is uh, shunning Barry since that point. Uh, Barry says that he's been trying to call Caitlin, just nothing coming back. So yeah, Barry's in a bit of a dodgy place because it's important to remember as well. Iris is still missing. Now, I did see people bring up that it was weird last episode that they didn't really refer to Iris being missing. And then in this episode, she isn't brought up at all. I think outside, I think Allegra brings up Iris or something like that, but Barry doesn't. I think it's just one of those things with like, they, 
you probably can't win in this situation because you probably just keep mentioning and it gets annoying. It's like, yes, we know that Iris is missing. You don't have to keep saying it. Or they don't say it at all and you go, well, why aren't they mentioning it? So it's probably one of those like lose-lose situations, you know what I mean? But anyway, we have Allegra at the Citizen where she is filling in as top dog, if you want to call it, while fully enough, Iris is gone, which is a good sight because she has been ignoring doing this since Iris left. But people have been saying, it's like, isn't Iris gone? Like, shouldn't she be the one running the Citizen? And like, that's a news source. That's running like, pretty much 24-7. You know, things happen at 3 or 4 a.m. that need to be reported on, and she's just always at Star Labs. But anyway, Taylor, this, you know, rival co-worker that's always been a pain in the ass for Allegra, wants to ride an expose on the light-based meta that works with the Flash, which, of course, is Allegra. Um, and, like, the photos that have been captured of this light-based meta cover her face very conveniently with light. Um, so Allegra's just trying to scrap this being a thing. But Allegra does get a message from Lydia. I think, I think it was Lydia... I think it was Lydia, um, which is the old acquaintance that Allegra wrote that article on early in the season. Can't remember what episode it was, but she was working in Jitters. She was like the janitor or like she was mopping the floors or something like that at Jitters in that previous episode. And she is giving Allegra the heads up about a gang that is making its way into Central City after decimating its way throughout Keystone City. And Allegra just wants Lydia to be a source for the citizen to run this story but keeping her anonymous due to the danger of this gang and the motivation for her being the source is to potentially help any unwilling partakers in this gang, which Allegra and Lydia would know would be the case. Unfortunately, someone connected to the gang is following Lydia and reports back to this gang that, you know, Lydia's going to sort of rat them out. And this gang includes both the new Dr. Light after Crisis, as well as Sunshine. Of course, these two being a part of Mirror Master's team from the end of season six, and they were alongside Ultraviolet, aka Allegra's cousin. Um, but of course, she bit the dust, I think, last season. But of course, the issue with Allegra being involved in all of this is the fact that this Aranya gang is the gang that Allegra was a part of previously and that this co-worker Taylor um, is very sus on Allegra. So yeah, Allegra's fighting an uphill battle. Now, meanwhile, with the good stuff going on, <laughs> we're back at Ivo Labs and Barry is with Chester and there is no signs of tachyons being used, which means there is no speed force being used. So the mystery deepens in regards to who the hell this could have been, with it also appearing that they were the cause of the fire due to their speed, with a very powerful battery appearing to be stolen by whoever was here and whoever this speeds towards, presumably. Now, Barry results to an option that does surprise Chester, which is actually going to ask Eobard about all of this stuff, both in regards to some knowledge he might have, as well as the fact that he might be like, well, hold on, was this actually Eobard? I need to make sure he's still in his cell. Now, the Aranyas, thanks to the tip-off from one of their lower members, like the one that was recording Lydia at uh, Jitters, attacks the citizen. Chester was called in um, by, uh, what's her name, Allegra, earlier in the episode, and he does put up like a temporary force field around the office, which just gives them time to talk. Uh, but... <laughs> I don't know, they just talked a lot. But Lydia wants to give herself up so no one else potentially dies. Taylor, who doesn't want to be in this situation anymore, exposes Allegra as a former member of the Aranyas to her other co-workers, with Allegra in order to gain the trust of her co-workers that, you know, she reveals that she is this light meta from Team Flash that Taylor was originally going to expose. Back to the good stuff. Now, Barry, we get, in, we get to see him visit Thorn in prison. This was easily the best scene of the episode. But it's only air new, so there was no mention of this in previous episodes from memory. But then again, it's not like they've consistently brought up Thorn. Like at the end of Armageddon, we knew that he was just being held in Argus, but they didn't specifically say where. But he's only air new in their Supermax prison, where they've held big characters before, rather than the standard Argus prison, which once again still holds some pretty powerful people. And you immediately see the effects that not having his powers is having on Thorn. And Thorn, you know. While he's obviously weak, he's happy to see Barry because he can just mess with Barry once again, just playing around with him, messing with his mind. And Barry can be sure, for the most part, that Thorn isn't the one that's around Central City, just being there. However, Thorn is curious, with Barry telling him that he is a, that like this thing going around there, you know, around Central City, they're a new speed star without really giving any details straight after that. And Thorne's sort of acting cocky because he apparently knows the answer to Barry's questions. But Barry fires back at Thorne, which I thought was good, by mocking his loss of speed. And, you know, hey, there's a new dog in town. There's a new speedster in town. They might be taking Thorne's spot on the food chain. 
hey, they might be my, you know, new main rival, my new arch enemy. And like, I'm going to be like, who the hell was Eobard Thorn? This new speedster is amazing. He's really, he's a really good fight. Um, he kills more people. Like, hey, Thorn sucked compared to this new speedster. And you can tell Thorn's, you know, <laughs> ego was being a bit bruised in that, in that like sort of scene. Now, Thorn says that the reason that this new speedster running around Central City is hiding themselves is because they are scared and unsure of their new abilities just like Barry was all those years ago, though it does feel like Thorne was keeping some information or opinions to himself. I actually had a lot of people message me the exact same thing on Twitter. It's like, hey, do you think Thorne was hiding anything? And it's like, that's what the scene gave off. It definitely gave off that he was hiding some information or just a general opinion to himself. Whether that's the case is another question for a later episode, but it definitely felt like that in that scene. But back to the citizen, we have Sunshine and Dr. Light get through the force field thing that Chester had, and we have Allegra reversing those two. Allegra gets shot by Dr. Light, but then uses her powers to, like, repair the wound. And we've always questioned when, like, Allegra's powers are useful outside of, like, powering up certain objects, because there's never really been a scene where it's like, oh, these light meta powers are really useful in the field, and apparently they're useful against other light-based metas. <laughs> that's what it seems like. That's when they're useful. When someone else has light-based powers, that's when Allegra's powers are useful. But before Dr. Light and Sunshine can uh, continue their attack on Allegra, the other citizen employees broadcast uh, Lydia like exposing the gang. And the gang bails after saying that this isn't over, as if they're going to be back again. And I think we can all agree, I hope it's over and we don't come back to this. I think that's a pretty objectively sound uh, statement and fact. But anyway, back to Star Labs with Barry. He's returned from Leanne New. He's returned from his conversation with Iobardo Thorno. I think that's what they call him. Uh, maybe in Spain, not too sure. Where Chester and Allegra are as well. You know, they're back there after their ordeal at the Citizen. And I actually do get a video message from Caitlin, uh, who says she can't come back to Star Labs right now after that incident with Barry, with her going to stay with her mother, Carla, with Barry obviously concerned about his previous actions and the effect going forward. And just what it means. Like, he, I think you can tell that he hurt Caitlin, but at the same time, I think he feels he did the right thing, but maybe went a bit overboard. And there was that earlier scene where, with Joe where he's like, hey, yeah, you did that, but you also did this. You also went a bit too much. So it's important to remember Daniel Panabaker, who plays Caitlin, directed this episode. So she was never going to be in it outside of like some really small thing. And I'd be surprised if she's in the next episode as well. So I think they just set up her not being there. So I'd expect her in the finale 100%, but maybe even in some portion of episode 19, but it's going to be very curious to see what they do with her character after this incident with Barry going forward. I am very interested to see what they do there. But the end scene, we've got a pretty long, you know, end scene stinger thing, and we have this new speedster. We get to see them running. They go back to Ivo Labs to return the battery they took. They're just borrowing it, and they have this, like, white, black lightning going on, with the flash, you sort of look like the dark saber from Mandalorian. That's probably the best visual thing. So it's like imagine the, the dark saber from Mandalorian, but as lightning. And the you know Barry arrives as the Flash uh, in order to get some intel on this new speedster after tracking her. With an attack playing out, you know where this new speedster throws lightning at Barry, but Barry shows his expertise by just doing a casual flip while smiling and everything over the top of it which of course impresses this new speedster because she's like well hold on what the hell that's pretty damn impressive and she confirms that this incident in ivo labs was an accident it was just due to her being new to these powers not being able to control them too well and she confirms that she is not a natural speedster so not connected to the speed force and that she has generated her own sort of speed source not speed force but her own speed source which is why she took the battery to help power it and we actually learned that she actually invented the battery, which is, you know, confusing to Barry because it's like, well, hold on. Mina Darwan invented that battery. I've read the books and everything like that. And that's when she reveals herself to be Mina Darwan uh, with Barry offering to be a mentor to her. So this is the new character that we're going to get for the, at the very least, the back half, you know, well, not the back half, already in the back half, but the final three episodes of this season, we know she stretches out to the finale. She seems likable off the get-go. So I'm excited to see Barry mentor her especially because she's not connected to the speed force. So I wonder if there's some different, you know, like some different aspects to her powers or how she controls the powers or everything like that. But she's also trying to maintain this new speed source that she has. So I'm interested to see how they develop that and everything like that going forward as well. Now, the final thing before I just give my outro and stuff. Yes, I saw the promo for next episode. I saw, you know, who 
we'll talk about it in my trail breakdown because we have some stuff to talk about because I'm even just confused in the general setting of where that person showed up in the promo and I need to rewatch it. I only, re- only saw it once, saw the face and I'm like, holy crap, holy, holy balls. We'll say holy balls. I was very, I was shocked. I was shocked to see that person. But yeah, overall this episode mid for like most of it, just, I didn't really care. Like I, I was watching it. I was paying attention to the storyline, but at the same time, I was like, I don't really care at the same time. I was just sort of waiting for the new Barry and Thorn scenes to show up throughout the episode and, and all that, because I knew they were actually relevant going forward. But yeah, it wasn't the greatest episode. If it was just the Barry and Thorn stuff, I'd probably give it like a eight and a half, but I'm not even going to give it a rating because I usually don't. But I wouldn't even think about giving it a rating because it might be too light. But yeah, it wasn't great for the main stuff. But man, love the stuff they set up for the final three episodes. That was great. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on it to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions about the episode, especially ending uh, or the ending for the episode and where you think it's going to go heading into the final three episodes of the season. Of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.